Hello everybody and welcome back to Shenanigans. So, Krubarb, Glibglob, and Kuri are all going to set out and head to Wikthronradenta. For those of you that can pronounce that. Why did you name it that? You know, Is it just a fucking thing? Fantasy names are always so short. They're always like <laughs> one or two syllables, occasionally a three-syllable name. And I was thinking when I was making this map, you know, you never hear any good like Constantinople's in fantasy lands. <laughs> so I said, let's make a There's Constantinople. A <laughs> <laughs> so I, I used Constantinople as a base, and I did Wikthron Narenta, which follows Constantinople kind of similarly in just cadence. Um, just just to have it, you know, it should you should have a big long city name somewhere. Uh, but of course, everyone just calls it Wikthron for short, which is legit. If you don't want to say the whole long thing, like Frisco. Yes, yes, <laughs> like Frisco. <laughs> like if you want to get beat up by people who actually live in Wick Throng. Wick Throng, Renta. Renta. Yeah. Renta. Yeah. I mean, San Fran's not so bad, but Frisco is just. Oh, man. <laughs> That's like saying I, we live I, I, in I, I, Fresno. I, I think that's the problem. Is Frisco and Fresno are remotely similar, and it just makes us hate. I, I had a grandmother-in-law that insisted that everyone in Frisco called it Frisco. Oh and my! Like, I think they pretty much hate that. Like, no, 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 they, thats what they call it. <sighs> like, oh, that's what you call it. Ooh, yeah. Well. Anyways, um. So we're on the road, singing songs and making our way in to the big city. Yes, I believe there is a little token on the map that you can move, although I don't know why you might want to move it, because you don't really know how far you go at a time. Or like when, when encounters happen, I should probably move it to the location of encounters rather than you. But All right, fine. let me scroll around. Where are we? Wick. Thron Rarent. Okay, there we go. It's written there for me. All, All right. Let's see what happens on the way. Oh my. First day. And I'll is... have my weapons and everything now. I had my armor on. Okay. First day is forest. Two. Was that Marshall we down there, or did you just add it for an adventure? Um, the marsh was always there, I think. Oh, okay. I yes. just never noticed it before. Uh, on down. The counter tables are just too damn long. They need to be simplified. It takes too many rolls to make them happen. Okay. You could have no encounter. Oh, that wouldn't be any fun. To uh, be safe. <laughs> who cares about being safe? So you are. The person might die. <laughs> <laughs> You're about halfway through your first day. Actually, you are halfway through your first day. You are taking your lunch break. You've been okay. traveling on this road. You've seen a few other travelers on the roads. People uh, going the other way. Occasionally, there'll be like a rider who goes past you. It's not been a busy day, though, um, but there have been a few other travelers on the road when uh, you're stopped off on the side in this nice little shaded resting place near the edge of the river. I guess that should put you... I guess you're no longer near the edge of the river. Anyway, somewhere in a nice place. Uh, when skulking down the road, do you spy a small party of orcs? A very small party oh of orcs. There are three of them. Um, the now you've seen a lot of orcs in your time. Maybe not a lot, but you've seen some orcs. And orcs are kind of you know big, brutish, six six and a half foot tall, muscle bound guys. They tend to have greenish or orangish flesh or skin at least. Um, mm hmm. And kind of a heavy set jaw, usually wearing the heaviest things they can find and wielding the biggest weapons they can find. Um, these are thinner orcs. They're not like starving orcs, but their their frames aren't quite so 
bulky. They're a little bit on the, the thinner, taller, skinnier side of things. They're wearing light leather armor. Um, the one in front is carrying a short sword or something at his side. And you can't see what arms the other ones behind him may have. But you've got about 10 seconds to react before they spot you. All right. I stand up. I get out um, uh, some of my liquor rations here. And I look welcome. I absolutely like welcoming and, and totally nonplussed by them. As if I expected them and I'm glad to see them. Okay. They keep skulking down the road. Then the lead one does like a double take and freezes and looks straight at I looking a wave. straight at you. Uh, he narrows his eyes. Do you speak Orcish? Uh, pretty sure I do. I had all those languages. Do you want to double check for me just in case? Let me see here. I think I had... Like some languages and then languages to be named later. Let me see. Um, so I had a ridiculous number. We had, I was like wondering what they were. Let me see where I have that on this character sheet. I have modern language times five. Cobalt was one of them. And... I don't seem to have them written down as what they were. I don't think I had them all chosen out. Um, I just got as far as spending points for five languages. Cool. Do you want to pick them now? Just so that you can, we can know if you speak sure, Orcish, and then we can have this settled for the future? Yes. So, Cobald, Orcish. Do I get Elvish for free? I... Being an elf? No, I don't know. Pick it as a language, yeah. Or pick common as a language. Then you started with Elven and then had to learn common. Elven, common. Okay. So then I got two more. Um, what are other languages that are common around here? I don't have to like pick any regional language or anything. It's just the racial languages. Yeah. Um, let uh, Goblin would be fairly common. Uh, bugbear, which is a dialect of goblin. Mm. Dwarf, halfling, gnome. Gnomes are kind of rare, actually. There's only a few gnomes in shenanigans. Or in Berkshire. Do uh, dragons have their own language? Is there a draconic? Or do they just speak whatever? Dragons have their own... They have a dragon racial language, plus sub-languages for each uh, race of dragon. But you would have to... Give me a really good reason to speak dragon, like. Okay, never mind that. Yeah. Uh, let's go dwarven and cobalt orcish. I don't know if I want to spend another like one of my languages on goblin. That just seems like I'm getting all the humanoids. Um, is there any other? Or is that like fairly common? Is that actually would be useful to have orcish, cobalt, and goblin? I mean, that's a lot. It would be there... useful at times, I'm sure, but I don't know. I mean, that's a lot of languages to devote to humanoids. Although I don't know what else you would devote it to. Um, I guess I can always add, put in more points later for, for more stuff. Um, I guess I'll go with goblin if that's one of the most common languages around here. Yeah. All right, so Cobalt, Orcish, Elven, Common, Dwarven, and Goblin. Okay. Are my five languages plus my native language. So I can talk to pretty much anybody now? Pretty much. That's okay, great. that was that was the point. Um, all right, so it's you, you heard the Orc say to the ones behind him, uh, slowly get your crossbows. I think he's an idiot. Would you like to come have a meal with us? Uh, uh, you're not afraid of us? Should I be? Why are you not more afraid of us? Maybe that's... Maybe you should be afraid of me? Who Since are I'm you? I'm not afraid of you. Glad you asked. I'm Kuri Silvertongue. 
live the fantasy. Come, have a meal. Should I be afraid of you? Usually your people are. Well, I just got to tell you, there's no people like my people. I'm one of a kind. What is that you're drinking? Uh, just a little um, uh, martini shake and not stirred, it being the road and all. And why shouldn't we I slit your throat for your coins? Them. Why should what? Why shouldn't we just slit your throat right here and take your wealth? Well, the fact that I just invited you over and I have no fear of you at all would seem to give you a hint that I can probably wipe you out. Should it come to that? Mm. Orcs are aggressive, but they're not stupid. He grunts uh, and motions for his fellows to stand where they are. Uh, and the lead one walks up to you. How tall are you, Curry? Uh, he's actually pretty tall. He's tall and uh, slim, so he's probably like 6'2". Okay. So this orc is a little bit taller than you, but not very much. Um, which, I don't know how you feel about that. Anyway, uh, he's a little bit taller than you. He's still much bulkier than you are, but he's kind of thinner for an orc. Um, yeah. yeah. He's got a, a long gait. Uh, his, oh, his leather armor reeks of sweat and stains and not ever having been washed and just kind of being out in the hot day. Uh, and he comes over and sniffs at what you've got in your hand and takes it from you, sips it, drinks it, hands it back to you. Desmond's best. Anyway, mm. come have a view, your friends, have a, have a seat, have a meal. You look like you could uh, use a little break from the road. As we all could. What do you want from us? Good company. He seems really confused. Like no human in the world has ever asked him to sit down and share a meal with him. Well, I'm an is... elf. That's true. You are an elf. Oh, you're an elf. I... We were just talking about that. Yeah. Even more confused Which means than... that any given elf could be a thousand years old and a and a wizard of unspeakable power. Uh huh. Which make it seems like that make people pretty careful around elves. Yeah. Is it a first level elf? Is it a fortieth level elf? Can't tell. <laughs> okay. What is the orc gonna do? Um, he takes a few steps backwards from you and says. Uh, what 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 is your purpose here in this forest? I'm traveling to the capital to take care of some business. And that's all? And You're... you. None of your business. And he backs up a little further and just waves for his men to walk into the forest. And he starts you to sh- sidestep. You sure you wouldn't like some? It's very good. Uh, he growls and... The three of them kind of disappear into the woods. Well, oh, okay. Yeah, they were mean, nasty, brutish orcs. <laughs> but very terrified of the the friendly person waving them over for dinner or lunch. <laughs> it's got to be a trap. Yeah, a couple of famous historical battles that have been won that way. Uh, anyway, let's, let's well, move that's on. that's too bad. I was thinking about hiring them, depending on how they were. <sighs> they needed a little interview. <laughs> uh, they missed okay. out on some work. Uh, all right. So the rest of the day passes uneventfully. Um, you make camp that night. Settle down in a... Somewhere, I guess. Okay. Uh, do you have any preference for how... How you want to take watch between the three of you? I have a feeling putting Libglob or Crew Barb on watch is, would pretty much be a exercise in ut- futility. Um, but just for funsies, I will have them each take a watch because I'm sure they'll be amusing. Uh, but really, I'm counting on Scrapper to keep guard. 
Hmm. Just in general, you know, to wake up, to smell danger, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so basically just going to, you know, be off the trail a bit where it can't be seen. Um, I don't really have any woodcraft, so I'm not going to bother trying to cover my tracks too much um, off the trail. And we'll just have to trust to fate and glib glob or, uh, or uh, crew barb making a lot of noise in a scary way when things happen. Okay. Well, the night passes gonna, uneventfully. I'm going to assume that there's sort of like a trip wire tied Ooh. to tin cans all to rattle together. Is basically how I'm going to figure they are. Okay. Well, and luckily uh, I only need four hours of sleep anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The night passes uneventfully. You all wake up fine the next morning and continue and continue your journey. Um, that day you cross over the river. It's a nice big river with a huge stone bridge and a small village center at either end of the bridge. A bunch of ships unloading. Uh, uh, but there's nothing too unusual about this place. There are markets here if you want to stop and buy anything, but otherwise you can just move on. Um, might need to refill the uh, uh, the liquor stash here. Uh, you know, a lot of worshipping going on for mm -hmm. Newton to protect us on this journey. So um, let's just say I spend another three gold out of get plenty, I would think, right? Any good mm -hmm. stuff in general? Yeah. All right. I mean, as long as I'm not buying, like, you know, massively excellent bottles of wine. Alright, so three more gold on that. Three more gold is plenty of wine. It's actually quite a bit of wine. It's like moderately good stuff. Like slightly better than... Okay. It's not in a box. It costs $10 at Trader Joe's. Right, right. So apparently if you are buying in bulk, you can buy 250 gallons of good wine for 20 gold. <laughs> you got a wagon. Uh, but that's if you're, you're going to the local Costco and buying your wine. If you're buying them by the drink at a bar, it's going to be like four well, or like five I silver said, for you've got cup. a wagon. Yeah. And nothing in the wagon. Well, if you would it's like 250 it. 250 gallons? I mean, this is where they unload things at the docks. This is where you can buy that stuff if you want. All right, I I can't pass up a deal like that. So, okay. twenty gold. Twenty gold for two hundred and fifty gallons. <laughs> yes, a ton of good wine. It's a good thing we brought the cart. A ton of good cider is only eight gold. My God. All right, so we are set for a while. That'll last us all week. Yeah. Um, so off we go with our new purchase. I think remember, crew barb, glib glob, no fighting if you and if you want if you want the wine. They nod eagerly. Um. All right. So we keep going. Yes. This is, this is a great trip so far. So far, we've scared off some orcs. We've got a bunch of a great deal on a bunch of wine. <laughs> Should travel more often. Damn it! Okay, I can't make this work. Um, so you you travel on down the road. Later that we, day, we 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 ease on down the road. <laughs> you ease on down the road. Ease on down. Ease on down the road. Yeah. Uh, some hours Sing later. The whole song. Nearing evening time, but not quite at evening time. There's a very small little brook that the road crosses mm -hmm. over. People have laid down some logs and put some dirt over it and some sod. And you know now it's a nice little path. But standing in front of this little tiny bridge, this Black cute night. little bridge. No, is a, a tall man. It looks like he's from a, a, the northeast where their, their skin's a little bit uh, more coppery. Uh, he stands there with his arms crossed, big bulging muscles, uh, wearing green tights and a kind of mid-thigh length studded leather skirt 
with a studded leather breastplate on, uh, but these bright green tights underneath that, and uh, a quarter staff leaning against his side. Wonderful! Oh, I love that look. Amazing! That is really working for you, especially in this forest. The green, a green. Oh. Who's your tailor? Mm. You shall not pass without paying the price. Yes, yes, yes. But who is your tailor? Because that is looking amazing. My tailor is a former student of Coronado Vasquez himself. Oh, you don't say. Yes. I'm mad that I just made him up the other day and he's already got former students. Excellent. How do you know your tailors so well? Well. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 just too soon. You've, you're not ready. But anyway, I. Well, and, and yeah. Anyway, what well, one gold per head? Any head that crosses here pays a gold. I see, and you are an agent of. Um, I have no idea what the organization name is. They should have an organization name. Um, the, I, oh my god, I can't even remember his real name. I'm trying to make a Robin Hood men in tights <laughs> joke here, but I, what is the, what is Robin Hood's group Robin called? Robin Loxley. But what's his group of merry men called? Don't they have a name? The merry men. Is it just the merry men? Yes. Oh. Uh, Merry Men, that is the name of my organization, and we charge all a gold to cross my bridge. Wonderful. Everybody has to have a thing, a gimmick, you know, something to set yourself apart. I like that one. Although, I kind of feel like there should be more. There are. Say there. No, I, I didn't mean like more of you. I meant like a trademark. Perhaps a laugh. Do you have, do you have, c c c laugh. Let, 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 me, let me see what your laugh is like. <laughs> Ooh, not bad, not bad. Now, hands on your hips and kind of throw your head back. <laughs> <gasps> I like it. I like it. Especially with the whole Merry Men thing, you got to have that going. How are the others? Can, can, they, can they pull that off? Well, th th hey, that's not the point here. The point is, who are you, what are you, and what is that big barrel in the back of your cart? Glad you asked. Curry Silvertongue, live the fantasy. And you if you think your men are merry now... Are you a merchant? Oh, Lord, no. What are you? What uh, am I? I'm Corey Silvertongue. But what, what, what is your profession? I do this. He seems confused. And what, what is that in the back of the cart? In that large barrel? That will bring your men out and we'll share it around. My men are secret. They hide. You'll never know how many of us there are. Well, then how do I serve them? He looks confused again. Are you offering your wine to us? The toll is still one gold. Well, I, I thought we could all have a little drink. Morale check. Huh? He nods. Uh... Leans, lay, lays his staff across the road and that's kind of like a, a symbolic road blocker and goes over to the back of your cart um, puts his mouth under the faucet and just goes for it if you don't come out no that, that's I'm, I invited him over yeah he he goes for the tap drinks some and comes back up so the your, your, your merry men want some too they're hiding they are secret yes, ninjas. Yes, yes, Dozens of them, dozens of them. Dozens of them. You'll never see them Nin coming. Ninjas, yes, yes, yes. Absolute ninjas. So, tell me, how, how's the, the Mary Manning going? How does that, how does that, 
tell tell me about that. I've never done that. Well, not in the block. <sighs> yeah. Puts his hands on his hips, shifts his weight to one side, and taps his other foot a little bit and goes, you know, it's a lot less merry than you think. Not everyone is as friendly as you coming on through here. We're trying to do good in this world, and, you know, most people just... They don't really care. You know, you've actually been really considerate and nice, this whole thing. It, well, thank you. I see no reason for us to get off on the wrong foot. Yeah, I mean, we hate having to charge this this tax, but it's the only way we can finance our operations, and we're doing the will of the people. Excellent. So, so what is the will of the people? What are what are you what are you doing for the people? Oh, there's a corrupt sheriff a few towns over. We're trying to kick him out. We need to raise fundraisers for the his opponent's campaign. No way to raise fundraisers other than to come and tax the road. So. No way to raise funds for a political race aside from taxing the road? Well, not against this guy. He's an incumbent. He's been in office 50 years. No one runs against him. No one can run against him in town. He'll run the business right out of town. So you got to go outside right. of town so, to make see, money. See, that's why you need to think 12th century. Enough. You're, you're back in the past thinking about the old ways to do it. Do you have a druid among you? Nah, maybe amongst the merry men, but you'll never know. But no, the town doesn't have one. No, I meant the merry men. Do you have? Do you have a? Do you have a druid? We could have dozens. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so here's here's what you're gonna do. All right, so you. Uh, do I have any? Animals? But what do we do if our druids are all sick, or in another state? Well, are there some that you could get on your side that are against this uh, sheriff? Yeah, yeah, we have tons. We have dozens of them, but they're they're all out of town or you know sick right now. But they'll be in back real soon, so don't you try anything. But yeah, we totally don't. Have I access to I wasn't really. going to try anything. Um, I was trying to suggest some things. See what I was thinking is you see you hear right now as, as we listen and i think even now on the the soundtrack you can hear those birds tweeting mm -hmm. okay notice that everywhere you go you can always hear birds tweeting yes so you want to defeat this sheriff and he has all the power of the incumbent mm -hmm. you need to get to all the people, get your word out in a way that gets to everybody in a way that he's not utilizing this tweeting. I was wondering how you're going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> the bird tweeting? Yes, all this, this twittering. This is how you're going to mobilize and get a grassroots campaign that using druid technology that your opponent doesn't understand. I'm afraid I don't understand, but that might just make sense. You can send out your message using the tweets. You can use these druids. Use the druids. Command the birds. So the birds can... talk to other druids. And then, yes, and uh, then they carry the message out to the people. You can just sort of like carrier pigeons kind of thing. You can tie little messages to the feet of the birds, and then the birds go out and carry these these tweets out to mobilize the people. Yes. Interesting idea there. Uh, Corey, yeah. Corey, you say? Yes. I. In fact, if you'd like to invest, I'm sure in like three or four years, we go public amazing amounts of money wow yeah, that's, a, that's a fantastic idea um don't no i don't have any money right now as you can see raise, trying to raise money sorry i'm gonna have to charge you one two three four gold to cross got, gotta beat back this sheriff rottingham he's he's the worst he's just the worst is he is he is he a slaver uh no he's actually been He's pushed a couple of uh, slave reform initiatives. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he wanted what to kind of He wanted to outlaw slaves in the the kitchens. Said it's taking away from traditional 
people's jobs. You know, anyone a kitchen work is something anyone can do, and if a slave can do it, then how are these other people supposed to get a job? And also, slaves are too dirty to be handling our food. So it's some real does he, important. Does he have like a really odd haircut, and he wants to build a wall to keep the slaves out? Well, I, I think he just wants to send the slaves back over the river. I see. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous haircut, though. It's just so short in the front, it's just long in the back. It's really weird. I see. So, interesting. Um, yes, I'm on a bit of a mission myself, and I don't know if your merry men, the dozens of them that there are, could perhaps help out. Uh, we still got to finish raising funds for this campaign. Um, oh, at this point, he goes, I, I oh, wait, you. hold on, there's someone coming, hold on, hold on. That's good. And he backs up to the bridge, picks up his staff as a family of four come walking through. Maybe not a family of four, but four, two men and two women come walking through the area. They got big backpacks on. Uh, one of them has a sword at their side. None of them have armor. They've all got traveling cloaks. They look, um, look like people traveling through with a bunch of gear, but no profession can be discerned. Um... All right, I'll step aside. Uh, they walk around the side of your wagon where the guy in the okay, middle uh, goes, you... Good, good, good day, family. Uh, would, would you be thirsty from the road? Uh, meanwhile, the other guy goes, you shall not pass. The family looks at him and looks at you and goes, yeah, well, we're thirsty. Yes, uh, hang, hang, hang on, hang on there. This is... It's plenty of time for that later. Here, come here. Hey, uh, hey we're uh, doing something. Curry, you're making me look bad. We'll we'll take care of it here, okay? So, just just hold on. I already gave you the whole thing with tweeting. We're we're getting places. We're moving ahead. There, you're kind of doing. I need things solutions for today. Off. You know, and planning for tomorrow is good, but we tweeting. can't get to tomorrow if we can't get through today. Yes, yes. Well, we can't get through today without a stiff drink. A lot of us. Here, so I, I'll serve up the family. Uh, start pouring drinks for everyone because you have 250 gallons of wine. You, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are a roaming good party, apparently. Um, and then no snack, though. I need to invest in check mix. The guy who introduces himself to the other family by shaking their hands uh, as Little John uh, says, "You know, I, we've been trying to get overthrow this the sheriff Rottingham for ages now." Uh, his slave initiative is interesting, but really he's he's been enforcing the oh god, what's the name of that ancient rite of first night? Right of first... Primus Nocte? Yeah, that one. Ew, yeah. That's... But he's been enforcing that. It's just a that. really horrible kingdom all around. <laughs> god, you know, the uh, kingdom's not that bad. It's really this guy. I mean... Prima Nocte, and saying that he, since he's the sheriff and oversees the town, it's his right, because the lord is off at war, it's just, it's the worst. My sister's been waiting to get married for six years. Yeah, I, I can definitely see, but that's a pretty good issue. Yeah. Anyway, that's why we need to overthrow him, so. So, yeah. so your sister can get married? Yeah. I have a vested interest in this, personally. I, I have too much love she, to give for the world. I'm not the sort of settle down, get married sort of guy. I, just, I got too much in me. What if she just got married in the next county over? You know, honeymoon there. I mean, this problem still needs to be solved, but at least, you know, she could she could take care of things. And then the... No, you see, the, that's realize. the problem. With We don't have a, a decentralized or a centralized wedding registry or wedding registrar. You get married in the next town over, come back to your original town, it doesn't count. She's not entitled to any of the legal benefits. No workman's comp, no unemployment insurance. I see. Wow, this is definitely... I. <sighs> not to Apparently mention... I have to rule this kingdom and fix the whole thing. Not to mention, you know, our family can't Girl, travel that many can. miles. My, my mom's old. She can't make... She can hardly make it out of the street. To throw the wedding over there, the party, it just, it'd be too much. And then if the sheriff even heard somehow, I'm sure he'd try and force himself anyway. It's it's really just a mess. So we were hoping, you know, sorry sorry to hold you guys up, he says to their family. Just, 
You know, but I, I need a gold from each of you. We got to so, really no, no, wait, 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 sheriff. So uh, other no, no no we 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 haven't heard their story yet. I mean, you and I we've been talking all about ourselves. Let, let let's hear let's hear from John Little. The little John John Little is the the guy the merry men that you've been talking to. Oh, oh, okay. I thought I thought he was like an actual Robin Hood. No, I, I thought I thought you meant like the family walking up was Little John. I'm like, oh, hey. No, 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 no. Them. <laughs> no, it's the other guy. Um. So Little John looks back at the other family and they kind of scratch their heads and go, "Uh, we're just traveling through, going from one town to another, just you know, selling our carrying our goods, selling them from place to place." Uh, we'll, we'll happily pay the fine or the, the fee or whatever. And one of them fishes out four gold coins and just plops them in the guy's hand. I'll go to, to John Little. Now, now seriously, you're, you're charging peasantry gold? A gold each? Isn't that a little excessive? Well, it's a little excessive, but we need the money fast. And, you, you know, peasants don't usually travel. It's usually That's merchants. Like a month's or... wages. Yeah, but my organization has already liberated a great amount of wealth from the establishment and delivered it back to the people. It's not my fault that the people have spent it all at this stupid, kobold gambling casino place up north. I don't even know where the place is, but when I find it, I'm going to shut it down because my people have lost tons of money there. So then we got to go liberate more money. In fact, we're probably going to liberate that casino pretty soon, as soon as I can find it. Shh. Well, that seems like a choice that people are making, and it seems like more than the money, they're getting joy and just the excitement. See, you're a strict libertarian, I see. He puts his hands on his hips and settles back in for a long debate and starts talking about uh, just the philosophies of the world on what a government should tell its people to do and not to do and going into how sometimes you need to protect people from themselves and businesses like this are inherently shady and they'll lead to these other problems and no matter what, and it's better just to cut them out of society as a whole because you have to build society towards an ideal and not just let things run free. You know, a controlled society is a more stable, more secure, healthier one than a, a rampant, raging society, which will always be, you know, bring itself down in some way. I point out the irony of a bandit arguing for a controlled society <laughs> yeah I know it's it's a little ironic I guess you could say but you're never gonna you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs you know if you want to get there you got to break the current mold and reshape everything and let the, the cast set let the bones set over here so to break the mold people just they got to pay up Look, I know we're starting local, but really one day I envision the Men in Tights to be a, a worldwide organization run by these this this Twitter that you've been talking about. I've been wondering how we're going to deal with mass communications. I thought teleporting wizards back and forth to talk, but... Pff, birds. Well, it seems like if you're bandits out in the woods, the druids would be something you'd have more of. Mm. As you have a lot of, they just happen to be out of town right now. Tons of druids and lots of Men in Tights, yes. he says, looking back at the family. They're just hidden everywhere. And, and our druids are all sick right now. Yeah, they, they think they, they all came down with malaria. Very okay, suddenly. So, look, so looking over this family, are they like merchants trying to look poor? Are they like legitimately a peasant family? They are, I... They look a little too... They're definitely not peasants. Um, they've got their wits about them enough that they, are, they don't look like the starry-eyed peasants who have never left their farms before. Uh, their clothes are traveling type clothing. There's nothing fancy on them, but they're in good condition. Yeah, I mean, they've been on the road. They're a little worn, but it's nice leather. It's good cloth, or it was when it started. Um, All right, and they're they're like legitimately a family, like mom, uh, dad, that's a couple the, of kids. No, it's two couples. Uh, clearly, two couples. Some of the the males look similar. They might be brothers. They might be cousins. They might just be two dudes that look kind of alike. You're getting a slight family vibe, but it could just be close friends. Okay. Well, let's let's you know I'll, I'll you know invite them to you know sit down and you know we'll have our, our drinks and and uh, I'll want to hear their story. I'm trying to decide 
Well, I, I, I'm trying to get an, an idea of their wealth here, yeah. their situation, the, what they're traveling for, etc. As you offer this for them to sit down, the guy who was speaking for them beforehand goes, oh, you know, we should really probably be getting on. we got a, a long way to Wickthron. Not going to make it tonight, but got to put those extra miles out there, you know? Right, guys? Let's Come on, guys. Let's Let's go. Well, I mean, we could all travel together. I mean, you never know when there's bandits about. Yes, that is a good idea, actually. Um, are you leaving soon, though? Uh, pretty soon, I, I, I imagine. We're well, just setting up a ground... Sure, uh, of a, course. A, ground, a grassroots, um, you know... Uh, campaign full of hope and change to uh, take down the, the corrupt sheriff. But Yeah, you know, and I would love to give a donation to that campaign, actually, he says, and he reaches into his pocket and pulls out five more gold and hands it to Little John. I would love to donate to your campaign. I wish you the best of luck. Prima Nocta is a terrible thing. Uh, should go the way of the mammoth, I think. Uh... Yes, off to the northern wastes. Yeah, he so claps the guy on the shoulder a little awkwardly. All right, yes. Yeah, so uh, clearly, this guy has way more money and is just trying to hopefully get through as fast as he can. All right, so I guess I'll go ahead and and pay the toll. Are you sure your merry men don't want to come out and get a drink? I mean, they've been sitting so patiently out in those woods. No, no. Like ninjas. They are trained warriors. They don't. They don't need the drink. Uh, in fact, the problem of them should probably stay off the drink for a little while. Gotta, gotta. Can't yes, overthrow the very, sheriff very if you. Disciplined. Haven't heard a sound from them. Ninjas, absolutely. Well, two of them are half elves, and you know how sneaky half elves are. Yes, it reminds me of there was, there was, you know, back back where I'm from, we used to have a holiday celebrating the ninja, and so we'd all go out for the ninja parade, and so we just kind of stand there on the sides of the streets, and there wouldn't be a thing, and then you'd look down in your pocket, and there'd be candy. That's a strange thing. It's a wonderful holiday. I wish I could. Yes, just be standing the there and have candy appear in my pockets. That sounds fantastic. Yes, it's just, I mean, you know, you'd always be disappointed if you saw one. Yeah. Scratch his head. Well, no, no. Um, yeah, we're totally like that. Just uh, thanks, thanks for the t Twitter tip and you gave him the four gold. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to be heading back this way as well. So are we covered for that too? No, but what day are you coming back on? We might not be here. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Well, good luck. Yes. Uh, well, anyway, um, good luck to you and all your companions. Yes. Well, they say good luck too, I'm sure. He nods. Uh, he gets out of your way and lets your cart pass over the little cute bridge. And you take off with the four others. Okay. Uh, are they up for road songs? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The two girls are super up for road songs. Uh, All right. They rolled a 19 and an 18, natural 19 and 18 on their uh, interest level checks. Which would be okay. You know. So they're they're super fucking psyched. The dudes are you know down for whatever. They're pretty chill. They don't really care. All right. So we get going. We do our whole musical number. Ease on down the road. On the road again. Road uh, to Morocco. All kinds of good stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, we keep going on down the road. Okay. The evening. You make camp again. I take it uh, as night approaches. Mm -hmm. And we can actually have a watch now with people that'll be effective, maybe. Mm -hmm. It is now nighttime. The map reflects that. 
Um, cool. So, what are you? How do you want to set up the watch? Do you care? Um, I don't know. We have enough for two people on each watch, or actually more than that. I'll have uh, like one person on watch with me and um, uh, Scrapper along with me because he's probably got much better perception. Well, I know he's got much better perception than I do. And everybody else can watch, do another shift and since I only need four hours. So you're going to do two four-hour shifts? Yeah, if that works for everybody. Uh, they kind of want more sleep because they're humans. They need like eight hours of sleep. Pansy-ass humans, you know. Well, if two of them each do a two-hour watches, and I'll do a four-hour watch in the middle, and That's I six. guess I can have Crew Barb and Glib Glob do watch with me. Mm -hmm. Sure, you guys work something out like yeah. that. Out. I mean, they, they, they can't expect to do less than two hours of watch. Uh, right. What is that? No. Yes. 16. Oh, there's a lot of dangers about. You never know when we might run into bandits. You never know. Do I pick up any more about them? They seem to have be a little odd. Um. Yeah, the guys don't say too much. The ladies are fairly chatty. Uh, they're fairly chatty the whole time, but the guys are pretty mm -hmm. quiet. Is there anything right. you'd like to poke at or inspect? I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, get their story, where they're heading, why, what they're up to, why they're traveling. Hmm. Um, hmm. They're. They seem kind of well off. They're clearly not peasants. They stay pretty vague, actually. Uh, one of the guys says that they're just out for and a little bit of an exploration just to see some nearby towns go to the capital always wanted to go to the capital in my life um, yes i'm planning to do a crazy broadway style there uh no we're just Full gonna keep montage. it montage just keep it low-key you know see some statues look at the guards that sort of thing visit some family there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i got a cousin Vinny. We're going to go hang out with him in his bar. <laughs> All righty then. Well, if, I'm not going to press too much if they're going to be, if they're if they're clearly trying to hide what they, they're they doing here. Uh, All right, we'll just keep going. They ask you what you're into uh, and why you're going around with these two kobolds, who at first they were skittish of and now they're pretty chill about. Well, because I I thought I could use some company on the road, and I thought they could help me out in the capital. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, wh what's your business? Uh, main, well, first thing is I is I want to get another dog. Scrapper is great, but Scrapper is a little bit lonely. I mean, I, I keep Scrapper good company, of course, but see, I've got the name. I just need the dog to go with it. See, and I explained the whole eighty-five percent name dog thing. Hmm. Would you consider yourself a lucky person? Ah, uh, well, of course. Newton looks out for me all the time. Newton, who's Newton? You don't know who Newton is? <laughs> Let me tell you the good news about Newton. And no, I'm not going to. Don't worry. It's not going to be any showing up at your door in a tie and blah, blah, blah. In fact, we're already giving praise to Newton. And I'll give the whole, I'll explain who Newton is and, uh, you know, the, the philosophy. And that it's basically all about, you know, um, enjoying yourself and, Nods. Being excellent to each other. Ah, being excellent With to each style. other. Style. Joy to yourself. Excellent to each other. It's an interesting philosophy there. Uh, what does Newton say about demi-humans? You know, 
uh, half elves, gnomes, dwarves, halflings. I'll wiggle my ears. Oh, well, my, clearly Newton has, has a uh, open position. I think basically, well, if you're willing to be excellent to each other, it doesn't matter who it is. Just be excellent to each other. He and nods. party on, dudes. He nods to himself. Oh, okay, cool. Nice chat. And then heads off to... But don't worry, I'm not proselytizing or anything, just since you asked. Newton speaks for himself. Okay. Uh, anyway, the night passes uneventfully. Okay. And you all wake up in the morning. Where is my map? There's my map. That was an odd question. Do I feel particularly lucky? Odd question. Uh, I did try to explore that with him a little bit. What he, what he was, you know, if he had something in mind with that, or... What do you mean? Did I have something in mind? I was just... No, just I mean, you were talking about good times, and... Yeah. You know... Well, do you mean, uh, like, have I been fortunate as in life as far as, you know, being well off, or do I have extraordinary luck, or I don't know what... Yeah, I mean, mind? some people find themselves always getting the the short end of the stick. You know, and I, I like to help out people who have been misfortunate in life, unfortunate in life, the misfortunate, I should say. I don't know. I like to think that I just have a good attitude about everything. And I mean, you can have the same thing happen and have a different attitude about it, you know, or look for look for ways to, to make things go your way. So that's good for you, I, man. A lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people don't see it that way. I mean, sometimes there's stuff that you can't do much about, but I guess I've been pretty fortunate that way. So you've never wanted to change your luck to give yourself that little extra edge just in case something goes wrong? I don't know. I tend to be pretty good at making things go right. Well, okay. It's what I do. Say no more. Say no more. Uh, like you said, I won't process. When life gives you, you lemons, uh, you get a Cadillac Margarita. I yeah, sounds With great. A slice of lemon. Yeah, uh -huh. he nods and seems very kind of pacified and non-confrontational. Okay, so we'll just keep going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next day, you arrive late in the afternoon. At Wickthron Rorenta. It is the capital city. And it is built up against the side of a mountain. At uh, the kind of the base of a mountain. The keep is built up higher in the mountain. And the you know it kind of comes down in comes down in uh, concentric circles around it until you get to this nice big front wall that extends well off the edge of the mountain. And then before that you have kind of rolling uh, what was probably forest, but has been cut away to create fields for people. And you have a few small market towns kind of spread out in front of the castle itself, and then, of course, infrastructure inside the castle and a different cast of people living inside. Love it. Very Minas Tirith. So is this a big city? Is this... It is the largest city in this kingdom. Uh, it well, is... is it like, you know, 10,000, 50,000... A million. I mean, what are we talking about? Uh, we're talking like King's Landing. I mean, what is this there? I don't know what the population of King's Landing is, but I'm going to say this King's place. King's Landing was a million. A million, which is, which is a huge. That's just ridiculous. City, although that was what. Well, that's what Rome was in. Yeah. Back in Roman times. But that's also ridiculous. Uh, no, yeah. this is not quite Rome status. This is probably a hundred thousand people. That's still pretty darn big by medieval standards. Maybe not 100,000. Maybe like 80,000. Okay. It's big. It's a big city. Cool. Big city. All right. Um, yeah, I think London was like 30,000 in the 12th century, but Paris was a lot bigger than that. Yeah, I, right, I'm really see. bad with these large numbers. I I don't even know how big Santa Barbara is. <laughs> uh, we're like, I think 120 or something like that. I'm not sure. You the medieval London, city tended to be concentrated yeah. in like you know a couple of square miles behind a wall, so it was really crowded, even though it was smaller. 
Right. So in the same area that we have Santa Barbara, you wouldn't have, like your medieval city would be much smaller than that. And yes, the surrounding countryside might, like the, the current area that we would call Santa Barbara might be not 100,000 in medieval times, but certainly more than the city. Well, see, like, well, you would, I mean, basically, because medieval times apparently suck, just like this kingdom, um, you know, you want to have a wall around you. Mm -hmm. Whereas Santa Barbara would just be open to attack and getting raided all the time. Right. Okay. Well, this kingdom has you anyway. know, a, a big wall with population inside and then a small groups of population on the outside uh, where it seems people, people have overflown. Can, the cheaper real estate. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's go in. Uh, we'll, we'll do a montage of... Um, you know, seeing the sights. Well, why don't we do the montage Pointing of seeing out. the sights when we come back from our break? Right. Uh, we'll see you guys on the other side of a break in just a few minutes. Bye bye.